Well, the 2024 Republican field growing today with former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson throwing his hat into the ring. And he joins former President Trump, former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley, businessman Perry Johnson, former conservative media personality Larry Elder. And drumroll, please, our next guest, 2024 Republican presidential candidate and author of the new book, Capitalist Punishment, How Wall Street is Using Your Money to Create a Country You Didn't Vote For. That would be Vivek Ramaswamy. Me. But great. So happy to have you with us here in studio. Good um, to see you guys. Yeah, I mean, we've been seeing you making the rounds. Uh, how is the roller coaster ride going so far? It's going great. I mean, I think the best part of it is meeting people live in person across the country. We're actually drawing big crowds in places like New Hampshire, Iowa. We've got a giant bus. It's kind of disorienting for the first time. You see a bus with your face plastered on the side <laughs> of it. So we got a kick out of that the first time. We're taking the bus down to South Carolina where I'm headed straight from New York here. And meeting people across this country, I think there is a hunger for real solutions, yeah. right? I think we've been talking, myself included, we've been talking about the problem for a long time, the infiltration of woke culture into every one of our institutions, the loss of national pride. These are real problems. Right. But I think I'm looking to lead the country out of this national identity crisis. I think people are hungry for it. I think we're reaching young people, really people of all ages, but people who are joining this movement. Uh, obviously, we just went through. We got the book coming in here. Just slid in right across <laughs> the street. Literally, the, the book go. literally <laughs> just slid in. <laughs> yes. We'll get to that in a minute. Well but I, I want to ask you, now, now that we know that Asa Hutchinson yes. joined the race today, we knew that he was going to officially announce. But where do you see yourself stack up against the rest of the competition out there? And, um, yeah. I mean, there's all this talk right now, Ron DeSantis, we're seeing that uh, legislation that's being pushed through in Florida to now give him some opportunity to get into the race as well. Yeah. Where are we at in terms of where, how, what do you bring to the race and how is this, this, the GOP pool stack up right now? So what I see in the conservative base is a clear desire for an outsider. Yeah. I think we need an outsider. In fact, I think the Republican Party is going to become the party who regularly puts the outsider in the White House. In a governor role in the Senate and Congress, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. But if you want somebody to gut the administrative state, if you want to actually attack the deep state and the swamp, that is going to take something more than just a conventional professional politician. There's two outsiders in this race. That's Donald Trump and me. I think by the end of this year, by the end of this calendar year, it'll be down to the two of us. And part of what I'm doing is I'm taking Trump's America First agenda even further than Donald Trump did. Right. America First doesn't belong to Donald Trump. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the people of this country, but I do think it's going to take that outsider. I've got fresh legs. I'm the first millennial ever to run for U.S. president as a wow. Republican. Yeah. And so I think we're going to reach that next generation and revive our national identity. And I think that's unique. Yeah. Uh, and also, one of the tough issues, um, there are lots of tough issues yeah. there. Of course, abortion is one yes. of them. Uh, Nikki Haley speaking out about abortion yesterday. Let's take a listen to what she said. Sure. Surely, we can all agree that abortion up until the time of birth is a bridge too far. Only seven countries on earth allow elective late-term abortions. We're talking about brutal regimes like communist China and North Korea. We should be able to agree that contraception should be more available, not less. And we can all agree that women who get abortions should not be jailed. Uh, you know, that that I, I, yesterday we, we were listening to that and all of us said, well, of course, women shouldn't be jailed. But what we missed from Nikki Haley was, well, how long then? What, what are we going to agree upon on or at least what where does she stand? Where do you stand? Right. And I think this is what you get from career politicians who are trying to play a political game of snakes and ladders. I'm very clear about where I stand. Mm -hmm. I'm unapologetically pro-life. And I think more people in this country are pro-life than will admit it. Here's how we know. Clarence Thomas asked about this in the Dobbs case. Say a woman, it's a real case, walking down the street, is assaulted by a man, she's pregnant, the unborn child dies as a result. There isn't a person in this country that I know, that probably any of us know, who would say that criminal doesn't deserve to be held liable. That tells me everybody shares pro-life instincts. Right. But I say that we need to walk the walk. So one of the things I favor that's unique is greater responsibility for men. Now we have paternity tests. We know who the father is. I think we can attach greater sexual responsibility to men as well. And that tells the people of this country this isn't a women's rights issue. It's not men versus women. It's a human rights issue. And that's where I'm at on it. But, so, but what about, uh, do you think abortion under no circumstances? Do you think there should be a limit? So I, I favor exceptions in the case of life of the mother. That's also a form of protecting life. 
I think incest and rape under the age of 18, you're talking about children. Children aren't the same as adults. I think that's got to be part of this. My view is also, and I'm very clear about this, I believe in the Constitution. Okay, the Constitution says that the federal government has its domain. That's why Roe versus Wade was wrongly decided. That's why I was cheering when it was overturned, because it's a matter for the states. Murder, if you believe abortion is murder, as I do, I'm a pro-life person. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a matter for the states to deal with. Murder laws are at the state level, not the federal level. And I think that's on constitutional principle where I stand as well. So How do you, I'm oh, sorry, but I was oh, just going to yeah. say, I just one quick follow-up on that. So do you think women who have abortions should be jailed? I, I assume that you, you maybe agreed with Nikki Haley. Maybe you don't. Well, I think there should be real penalties and real consequences attached to that if you take that law seriously. Jailed, not necessarily, but I do think that there needs to be serious liability attached to breaking the law. We're a nation built on the rule of law. So if you're breaking it, I think that should have legal consequences. Okay. How do you think that uh, the voters are going to uh, respond to this? So, look, one of the things I'm doing in this campaign is I'm taking even those most fraught of issues. Yeah. And I don't think they have to be as divisive as we make them out to be. But the path to unity, some people think, maybe Nikki Haley thinks, it's to show up in the middle and to compromise. I reject that. I think the path to unity in this country comes from being uncompromising about our shared principles, but to unite around the American principles that define what it means to be American. Yeah. Free speech, open debate, self-governance. American ideals are radical ideals. If we embrace the radicalism of those ideals, that's how we unite this country, not by playing this game of compromise. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm different. All right, Vivek, uh, thank you so much. We have a lot more to get to with you. Yes. So please stay right there. And we're going to have a lot more with you. Vivek Ramaswamy, presidential candidate for 2024, right after this. Stay with us. I think we should be able to express our views regardless of the color of our skin. We should have this debate I'm not saying you without me regarding views, you as a black man, that but you're me regarding you as a fellow citizen. That you're That's sitting what I think here, whatever ethnicity you are, explaining to me whatever ethnicity about I'm, I'll what tell it's you. like to be black Whatever America. ethnicity I am, I'll tell you what I am. I'm an Indian American. I'm proud of it. Wow. Uh, that was pre uh, Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy in clearly heated back and forth with former CNN host Don Lemon. Uh, that exchange is reportedly linked to Don Lemon's firing that happened this Monday. The New York Times claims the fiery, quote, uh, the fiery exchange left several CNN leaders exasperated. Let's bring back Mr. Vivek Ramaswamy. Uh, all right, Vivek, that was a heated moment. Um, you know, we've heard a lot about Don Lemon, that he has been contentious, that he hasn't been nice to producers, that he is, hasn't been respectful of people who he's interviewing. You seem to be one of those people. Uh, what was that like? And how do you feel maybe being the man who broke the camel's back, so to speak, for Don Lemon? I feel pretty good about it, to be honest with you. Because <laughs> I've got a thick skin. I didn't take offense. You know, when people reached out to apologize afterwards, I don't need any apologies. What I like doing is I like going to the other side's home turf, yeah. debating on the ideas, and then winning. Because you know what? We have the winning side of the arguments. And I'm glad we smoked it out. Because what happened is, put yourself in Don Lemon's head. You think civil rights are good. The Second Amendment is bad. That's how his mind works. Right. What I explained was the Second Amendment is fundamental to securing civil rights including for black Americans. That's what happened in American history. Well, it turns out that made his head explode. And he actually, you know, just unraveled on set. He was lashing out at me for saying these things despite not being black. I believe we should be able to debate ideas no matter the color of our skin. That's what it means to be American. That's Martin Luther King's dream, by the way, too. And so I will speak that without apology. And I think we're at a moment where quietly, though many people won't admit it out loud, even on the left, they quietly agree with me, and that's why I think I'm pretty optimistic. And I'm going to keep doing this, by the way. And that wasn't the only shakeup. We saw Tucker Carlson go out on the same day. The Fox News let him go. Uh, what did you make of, of just the media shakeup and, and also to now where Fox News is headed? And uh, as somebody from the Republican Party, Fox News, traditionally Republican, what do you make of what's, what's going on over at Fox News and the Tucker Carlson exit? Well, I know Tucker wasn't on your network, but I'm going to pay my compliment anyways because he's a friend of mine and I respect him. He is one of the most thoughtful voices in our movement. I won't even call it the conservative movement. I'll call it the pro-American movement because he defects from the GOP orthodoxy. I think that's some of the things that, you know, frankly, you guys do as well, too. You don't just shackle yourselves because the GOP said it. it's right. Mm -hmm. You got to think based on first principles, okay? And that's one of the things I'm bringing to this race as well. I could care less. I'm a, I'm a businessman. I'm not from the inside of politics. But we have to look at this and recognize the moment we live in isn't even between Republicans and Democrats. That's boring. This is between whether you're pro-American. Do you believe in the ideals that this nation was founded on and are you willing to sacrifice for them? 
or are you fundamentally, like Don Lemon is, I think, anti-American? Do you wish to apologize for the existence of a nation founded on those ideals? Mm. And if we view it that way, it's 80-20 in our favor easily. Half the 20% is people my age or younger who never learned those ideals in the first place, which is why I think we can actually win the 2024 election in a landslide, like Reagan did in 1980. That's what I'm running to deliver in 2024, and I see the opportunity to do it. What is something that people would be surprised to learn about the man, Vivek Ramaswamy, versus the, I'm not even going to call you a petition, the businessman who's running for president? You know, I think the thing that opened my eyes to even this path in life was having kids, actually. It was in 2020. My wife, she was a throat surgeon, and this was in the peak of the pandemic. Look, she has a specialty in New York City. She helped patients in New York City. I actually spent the first two months of my life raising our son, our first son. There was something about that that just changed my view of the world. I was building a biotech company. I had developed medicines. One was for prostate cancer. That's FDA approved today. I'm incredibly proud of that. But that's when I said, I'm going to step aside from that job to focus on cultural cancer that threatened to kill that dream that I had. And I'm doing it for our kids' generation. And the fact that actually we travel around is one of the things people may not know is we travel around as a troop. Our family and I, when we go on that bus tour in South Carolina this week, and my family will be right there with me, a three-year-old and a nine-month-old. But I think we can't just preach about family values. We have to actually practice what we preach, and that's important to me. All right. got to get to the book, Capital Punishment. Uh, tell us more about it. Uh, where can people find it? And why you decided to write this even before you announced your run for presidency? I didn't even know I was going to run for president at the time I wrote this book. This was a sequel to my first book, Woke, Inc. This one's called Capitalist Punishment. And the whole theme was there was one chapter in Woke, Inc. I wrote this book several years ago. Yeah revealing woke capitalism in America, about the ESG movement. So this is a real trick. Probably most people watching this program, their own money is being used to advance racial equity audits and emissions caps in corporate America's boardrooms that most people don't know they're actually voting for with their own money. Mm -hmm. So it turns out you don't just vote every November. You vote every day with where your dollars are invested. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. So this is a book that lifts the curtain on that scam, on the ESG movement, the likes of BlackRock who are pushing it. As an entrepreneur, I actually founded a company called Strive that competes directly against BlackRock, but I also wanted to write the book to educate people on what's happening with their own money. And I'll tell you, part of the reason I'm running for president is there's no one-size-fits-all solution. It's going to take some solutions through politics, but some of the solutions can come through the market too. And so hopefully people who read that book realize how they can empower themselves to actually literally be the change they want to see in the world by making sure their dollars aren't abused back against them. And so capitalist punishment, it's a little bit heavier reading than Woke Inc., mm -hmm. but I think it's going to be something that teaches some people that things they didn't know. All right. Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy, thank you so much. Have a good trip down south with the two young ones. I'm thank sure you. Keeping, keep, we'll be keeping busy, and we'll have people look out for the bus with your face <laughs> on it. And we look forward to talking to you again. I appreciate that, guys. Great seeing you. Thanks thank so you. Thank you.